Some of the most common causes of MS or multiple sclerosis is mitochondrial dysfunction. So we know that our mitochondrial cells are very important for creating our ATP, our energy, and they have little nanomotors that are revolving at 9,000 RPM. So really important to keep those nanomotors running. And when our mitochondria suffer, then so do our neurons and their ability to translate that information, which is so important. So this is really important in terms of overall health and longevity is to keep our mitochondria happy and healthy. Check out my other videos on mitochondrial health. Another common cause of multiple sclerosis is leptin resistance. So this can be related also to insulin resistance. When we're eating too many carbohydrates, we may have a high blood glucose level. Now things are not balanced. Our leptin signaling will give information as well to our brain as to our state of affairs and in terms of survival and now this chronic inflammation that can ensue because of having the leptin resistance and the insulin problems as well can be a common cause for the mitochondria not being happy and healthy and can translate into some of the mitochondrial diseases ms being one of them poor sleep we know is never our friend when we're talking about preventing disease and this is related to multiple sclerosis as well as a common cause. Now, recent evidence has revealed that melatonin from our brain and its secretion is dysregulated in MS patients. Now, this suggests that melatonin could be a potential target for therapeutic intervention. And I don't mean taking melatonin as a supplement. That's not something that I've ever recommended. I'm talking about maximizing and enhancing your own melatonin secretion by having proper sleep and proper in-tune circadian rhythms with the earth. Now, when we're talking about that, we also have to think about EMF exposure. So there's something called voltage-gated calcium channels, which will allow for too much calcium to flood into our cells. This can damage our mitochondrial cells and, of course, can translate into MS. We also have to be aware of low vitamin D levels as a cause for MS, as well as lack of sunlight exposure. And the research has really now shown that correlation between not getting enough sun and people that live further away from the equator definitely have a higher risk of developing MS. Another factor to consider as a cause of MS is leaky gut syndrome. So we know that when we have an autoimmunity attack on the myelin sheath of the nerves that this can come and stem from what's going on with autoimmunity as it started off in the leaky gut. So this is something again, I've got other videos on leaky gut syndrome and what to do exactly about that with different tips for you. So make sure you check out those videos. And another common cause for MS is toxicity. So when we have poor methylation happening and methylation plays a very important role in our t-cell function and when it's not working properly then this can be associated with the development of autoimmune conditions ms of course being one of those so today i talked all about ms and some of the most common causes of ms i hope that you've got some questions or comments for me please drop it in the comment section below be sure to share this video as well and give me a big thumbs up if you're new to my channel welcome in i hope that you'll subscribe and click that bell to turn on the post notifications. Everyone has a calling in life, and one of mine is to educate you how to live your life in tune and in line with nature. Thanks for watching.